What's up, guys? Gun here. Happy Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. NBA opening day is upon us. Got two games of action tonight. But that's not necessarily what this video is about. This video is intended to be your primer for opening day for every team. Just to kind of get caught up because this has been... Uh, one of the most active NBA off-seasons of all time and in turn has become one of my most anticipated NBA seasons of all time that I've been alive for just because there is so much great talent, so many great teams built and spread across the league that for the first time in a long time, I feel like I don't know what's going to happen. And that has not been the case uh, for a long time uh, going into NBA seasons you just always kind of know that the Warriors are going to get there LeBron James is going to get there you know what I'm saying like there's always one or two teams that are just going to be the teams this year it is wide open there's some sleeper teams out there floating around the Clippers look stacked the Lakers look stacked the Denver Nuggets are getting a lot of love uh, by Vegas and a lot of uh, sharps in terms of win totals and how far they can go. We know the Nuggets were really, really fighting last year. Now they're going to get uh, Michael Porter Jr. to kind of throw in the mix. The Utah Jazz look really doggone good. Uh, the East, uh, we still got the Boston Celtics. We got a Toronto Raptors team still hungry, even though they don't have Kawhi. Uh, Brooklyn, some Kyrie action out there with DeAndre. Might be able to uh, at least put the Nets... Uh, as a, maybe a top four seed in the in the East, and who knows what happens then. I mean, it, it's a wide open league, and I'm super super excited. The Rockets with with Harden, Westbrook looking uh, really really fun to watch. I'm excited. Hopefully, you guys are excited, and uh, hopefully, the uh, watchability of the NBA this year will be much higher than in years past. And then, of course, I think the NBA will have an insane advantage over other leagues in terms of uh, just primetime TV, the Tuesday night, Thursday nights on uh, TNT, the ESPN games. There's so many great teams out there. There's probably going to be a lot more games that feel a lot more much watchy uh, on TV this season, which if you guys have been watching some of these primetime NFL games, that hasn't been the case <laughs> for the league. So I'm excited to chop it up. Uh, and, and as fast as I can, I will go through uh, all teams, um, get you guys caught up for opening day. I want to get some plugs out of the way. Please don't fast forward because there's some important stuff here. First of all, the content schedule for myself, NBA, this channel, and you guys. I have been super appreciative of you guys supporting this channel. Uh, I, I have gotten so many DMs and, and tweets over the off season and in the last week of people uh, asking when I should, when they should expect uh, the content, and then that has in turn made me um, want to know how you guys want to consume my content and potentially when you guys want to consume my content. And in the last couple seasons, if you follow the channel, uh, I used to do a lot of night before live streams uh, with co hosts and breakdown slates and whatnot, which that video was able to soak overnight and all day. But by the time lock came, there was perhaps a lot of information, a lot of thoughts and ideas that did not age well because of um, daily scratches, illnesses, uh, injuries, stuff like that. Um, but it still gave a lot of people something to look forward to, to wake up to, start the day with. Uh, and then uh, we started doing some afternoon streams to combat um, poor aging news. And that was fun. Uh, but, of course, it was just a few hours before lock, so there wasn't a whole lot of time uh, to consume it. You almost had to catch it live. And I've grown a group of viewers that want the pre, uh, the night before stuff, and a, a, and a group of you guys that want the day of. I put up polls here on YouTube, put up polls on Twitter, and it was pretty, pretty split. So I'm going to try and compromise here, and I want to do... Um, some night before content, but it wouldn't be in the form of a live stream, rather a recorded video. Uh, and in that video, my idea is to kind of review that day slate, uh, talk about some of the you know the, the better plays, the worst plays, some shocks and stuff like that, while lightly previewing the next day, and then maybe focusing 
on a handful of players I like individually. Uh, and then we would come back uh, the afternoon of for a full slate breakdown. But here's the kicker. Here's the catch. That's not going to be on YouTube. We're going to put that on my Twitch channel. For now, things might change. But I, 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 I really like the what Twitch offers um, for live streaming. Uh, I've been using... Uh, I've been a member of Twitch for years. I've been streaming. Um, yeah, I've built myself a little community over there for my video game um, adventures. Uh, but I'm going to use that channel to uh, live stream NBA uh, discussions and, and breakdowns. So I, I need you guys, if you guys want to come along for the ride, to go to twitch.tv and make yourself an account. This way you're ready for the, for the live stream that we're going to do on Wednesday. Uh, and once you have that set up, You'll be good to go. Um, then go to twitch.tv slash gundacker99. Don't forget the 99. Follow that channel and you should receive alerts. If you consume the live streams on a mobile device, um, please make sure you go to your app store and download the Twitch app. It's a really easy process. You log in uh, and then you'll actually get push notifications when we go live uh, and you have some fun there. You can do so much more as a viewer and as a streamer on the Twitch platform right now. Um, more ways to support the stream and more ways to reward streamer or uh, viewers uh, that I want to use that as our original platform right now or later today. This channel is going to receive uh, an overhaul graphically redesigned and rebranded, uh, kind of stepping away temporarily from. Uh, the video games uh, area for the channel uh, and making it a little bit more welcoming for the fantasy sports followers. So make sure you go to twist.tv, gundacker99, uh, and get followed up and get ready for that. Uh, also, if you guys are ready to come along for the ride in, in the uh, premium section of rundfs.com, you can go to rundfs.com, make yourself an account, check out the VIP passes. We have kept the same NBA price. Uh, this will be our third or fourth year at the same price. We have not increased prices. Uh, I didn't really think, um, you know, I'm not really in uh, to the premium market for profit. Um, and I didn't feel like we need to move the price any. Yes, it's different than what the MLB season price is. But you guys that have uh, been following the last couple of years uh, will recognize that all the pricing uh, is the same. There is an MVP package that will be uh, available this week only. It will come off the board on Friday night, I believe. Uh, and that'll be a $350 package that you guys can get. And that will lock you into full VIP access until June, the end of NBA, uh, which will encompass the rest of NFL, uh, the beginning of baseball next season, uh, which is April. Uh, and then, of course, all of NBA. Uh, and you, and uh, you also get full access to the 24-7 VIP Discord which is a uh, great supplementary uh, app that you can put with your subscription um, to uh, be part of a community of like-minded DFS players that are all uh, very keen, very privy uh, to strategy, to uh, playing at all different bankroll levels, at all different contest types. Uh, and then every day before Main Slate Locks, I host a two-hour pre-lock voice chat as you guys can grab a mic get in on or uh just listen in on uh as myself and the and the vipers talk some plays i'll field questions as much as possible um and uh update you guys on anything that's changing in the spreadsheet or whatnot or projections or whatnot another benefit of having a full community like this is there's probably going to be close to 100 users in this um by the end of the week uh, going into next week Everyone is keeping an eye on news, and this is a very news-intensive uh, sport to play for fantasy, and it's a huge, huge benefit to always have uh, an ear on the ground uh, for people that are watching, listening, reading content, reading uh, beat writer notes and stuff like that. So really sharp crowd to be part of. I invite you to be part of that. It is going to be a long NBA season, but it should be a fun one. And it should be a profitable one. So I invite you guys to come be part of the VIP family. RunDFS.com. Get in that. 
And then lastly, how about some free stuff? I've reopened the uh, lobby chat at rundfs.com slash lobby. Uh, the chat roll chat here. This is a free chat you guys get signed up on. Um, I've had it down for the last couple months for baseball. No one really um, frequented the, the public site for baseball. But chat would be back up. Right next to the chat is a news feed uh, via Twitter of all of my favorite trusted uh, NBA news sources, um, Fantasy Labs, RG, uh, Beat Writers, Shams, uh, Woj, stuff like that. Uh, you guys can actually park yourself here in the daytime, talk some picks and plays with other people in the free chat. And then as news breaks, you'll see uh, up to the minute um, tweet updates right next to the chat. So pretty convenient there. So that is all the plugs I think we have for now. Let's talk some NBA. Let's talk some basketball. Let's talk some Atlanta Hawks to get us started. Alphabetical order. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks were 29-53 and 53 last season. Made a few changes. The biggest change that they made uh, was trading Tarn Prince to the Nets. Uh, some of their key players on the surface are looking like Trey Young, Evan Turner, Kevin Herter, Cam Reddish, Alan Crabb, DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Bembry, John Collins, Jabari Parker, Alex Lynn, uh, and maybe Damian Jones. Uh, Kevin Herter was a pool, full participant in practice on Sunday. He missed all of preseason. He could be ready for the season opener. However, you might assume that he won't be ready to play a full allotment of minutes. Cam Reddish, dealing with right hip tension, is expected to play around 20 minutes in Thursday's season opener. Alan Crabb, dealing with a right knee, he's rehabbing it. He's unlikely to play for the Hawks until mid to late November. And DeAndre Hunter has been the confirmed starting small forward. My coach, Lloyd Pierce. Key pickups for the Hawks this offseason. Um, Evan Turner, trade from the Blazers. Alan Crabb, trade with the Nets. Uh, Chandler Parsons, trade from the Grizzlies. And then Damian Jones, traded from the Warriors. They did draft DeAndre Hunter with the number four pick. That was a pick traded uh, with the Pelicans. And then they picked Cam Reddish, number 10 overall. Uh, and, of course, we might be seeing him ease in uh, early on and then likely play a larger role as the season progresses. They lost Kent Bazemore. He was traded to the Blazers. Um, any other big ones? Tarn Prince to the Nets. That's a big one. He was a big uh, piece of this team last year. Um, high usage guy. Uh, so we'll be replacing him early on, hypothetically, with um, hopefully value plays uh, until they get priced at the right area. Amari Spellman traded to the Warriors. Dwayne Dedman uh, went and signed with the Sacramento Kings, and then Miles Plumlee was traded to the Grizzlies. Uh, looking at the preseason um, stats for this team, Trey Young, as you might expect, led the team in usage almost 32%. Jabari Parker, 23.3%. John Collins, 23%. Uh, and those were the main guys that you had to keep an eye on. Cam Reddish, when he was on the court, a 21.4%. Uh, usage rate, Trey Young led the team at points per game, 16.8%. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, 11.8. Jabari Parker, 11.4. And John Collins, 10.2. John Collins, by the way, uh, averaged one block per game. So uh, we'll be watching those guys early on for fantasy. The Atlanta Hawks were the fastest team in basketball last season uh, with uh, a team that allowed, I believe, the fourth most uh, points per 100 possession. So this was a team that we definitely attacked a lot. Uh, it's going to create... A lot of possessions likely to play a similar play style this year. Vegas gave them a win uh, win over under of 34 and a half. That's spotting them about five more games than they had last year. Uh, letting Trey Young uh, evolve as a uh, player a little bit. And then, of course, uh, Jabari Parker, John Collins, Alex Land. A pretty solid front court for them. Moving on, Boston Celtics. Uh, last season, 49 and 33. Uh, Vegas putting their win... Uh, total at 48 and a half right now. Uh, their core players right now, Kemble Walker, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum, uh, Daniel Tice, Enos Cantor. Uh, notes for them, Jalen Brown did sign a four-year, $115 million extension. Gordon Hayward, illness, did not practice Monday. He is expected to play in the openers, just an illness. Uh, Robert Williams, Dealing with a concussion, he's limited to non-contact work during Monday's practice. He's expected to be cleared for full contact Tuesday. 
tackle fall concussion did not participate in Monday's practice. He did suffer the concussion in Sunday's practice. Uh, he's not expected to be an early season rotation candidate anyway. Uh, and then guard Romeo Langford dealing with a right knee, limited to non-contact work at Monday's practice. Off-season moves, Kemba Walker signed and trade from the Hornets. Uh, tackle fall, Enos Cantor was a free agent. Uh, they drafted Romeo Langford with the number 14 pick. Grant Williams with the 22nd pick. Carson Edwards with the 33rd pick. Uh, and they lost Kyrie Irving. He went to the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, R.J. Hunter went to, uh, overseas. Terry Rozier was part of that trade to the Hornets. Uh, P.J. Dozier signed with the Nuggets. Marcus Morris signed with the Knicks. Uh, and Aaron Baines opted in and then was traded to the Suns. And Al Horford, Al Horford, Signed with the 76ers. So this is one of the teams that has one of the more drastic changes from last year to this year. Starting lineup alone looking a whole lot different with no uh, Al Horford, no Marcus Morris. And then, of course, Terry Rozier was a heavily leaned on backup guard. And, of course, Kyrie Irving. So we'll see what Brad Stevens does with it, with this team. You probably expect them to be a middling pace, good defensive team. Um but we'll see. Enos Cantor not really known for <laughs> being a great defensive center. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be some early on leagues here. But I think for the most part, uh, it won't be that big of a problem. If we'll look at their uh, uh, their preseason stats here, just kind of see what's sticking out uh, from a usage standpoint. In the uh, preseason, Jason Tatum led the team in usage rate, 30%. Uh, Kemba Walker had a 22.2%. Uh, usage rate uh, points per game was led by uh, Carson Edwards 15.2 by the way Carson Edwards is I think he's going to be one of their two way players yeah he's on the opening day lineup uh, Jason Tatum 13 points per game Kemba Walker 12 points per game um, I think this is going to be one of your, your your typical Brad Stevens team man the pace is going to be meh the, the defense is going to be uh, plus uh, so I probably won't attack this team too much unless there's some great prices that I have to take advantage of or some guys to project to play some heavy minutes or, you know, Kemba misses a game. Oh, okay. I do have Carson Edwards listed. Yeah, yeah. He's the backup uh, guard here. So Carson Edwards actually had a 28.6% usage rate when he played too, as you might expect, uh, as, you know, they look at what their backup guard can give them. Um, any other big... No, okay, let's move on from that one. Try to move along kind of quickly. Sorry if I'm flustered. I don't want this to be an hour-long video. Brooklyn Nets, led by Coach Kenny Atkinson. They're looking a lot different, too. Last year, 42-40 and 40 win-loss record. This year, Vegas only spotted them uh, another one-and-a-half wins. Uh, their team obviously looking a lot different, but some of the more familiar names and more efficient names have stayed along for the ride. Kyrie Irving uh, and DeAndre Jordan are the biggest additions, and, of course, Kevin Durant. Uh, added to the squad uh, in that trade with the Warriors for D'Angelo Russell. But he's not expected to play this season. Wilson Chandler suspended 25 games due to testing positive for PED use. Uh, Kevin Durant expected to sit out the entire season with that Achilles injury. Tarn Prince agreed to a two-year $29 million extension with the Nets. He will be a starter. And Coach Atkinson said he will start, quote, the hot hand uh, and matchups for DeAndre Jordan and Jared Allen at center. So if the Nets see a bigger center, maybe like a uh, an Andre Drummond or something like that, you probably expect DeAndre Jordan to start. And if they see some small ball teams, that you might get Jared Allen in the fold. Um, Kenny Atkinson has been a guy that has been pretty spread out with his minute distribution. So I'm curious to see um, how attackable this team will be early on from a fantasy perspective. Uh, I expect Kyrie to still be like a 30, 34-minute type of guy. But you know Spencer Dinwiddie uh, likely fights his uh, role for 28 to 32 minutes when he's uh, hot. Karis LeVert uh, was a great player for them, uh, or has been a great player for them the last couple of years. Great young talent. So I think he is another guy I'm going to be watching, but I also don't expect him to be uh, a guy that surpasses 30 minutes a whole lot. So I do think... Uh, we should expect a lot of the same for the Brooklyn Nets in terms of minute projections. A lot of, eh, will this guy really, you know, break 30 minutes more often than not? Um, Tar and Prince, though, uh, I think it's going to be a big, big player uh, for this Nets team. I think he's going to be kind of a do-it-all. Um, 
guy that can play really three positions for the team, depending how how Atkinson wants to uh, run his units. Um, Kyrie Irving led the team in preseason usage. No surprise there, 33.9%. Spencer Dinwiddie uh, had a 27% usage rate when he was on the court in preseason. Uh, and then looking for Prince, Tarn Prince, just a 21.8% usage rate uh, for the Nets in uh, preseason. Uh, points for game leaders, Tarn Prince, 16.8 points per game in the preseason. Karis LeVert, 11.2. So not a whole lot of surprises here. We'll keep it moving. Charlotte Hornets, the next team we're going to chop up. Uh, this team, man, this team's looking a little rough around the edges. It is life after Kemba Walker. Uh, point guard, starting point guard, Terry Rozier. Uh, in the shooting guard position, they have Nick Batum, Malik Monk. Then we are... Uh, looking at Dwayne Bacon, P.J. Washington, MKG, Miles Bridges at the four, Marvin Williams at the four, Cody Zeller, uh, Willie Hernan Gomez, and Bismack Biombo at the five. Nicholas Batum stated that he would be fine working off the second unit this season. Uh, it is not confirmed whether or not he will start on opening night. And then P.J. Washington expected to be in the rotation after a strong uh, preseason. As I stated, Terry Rozier... Added to the team, traded from the Celtics. Uh, guard Kobe Sim Simmons was picked up from uh, free agency. I think he might be on a, a two-way. Caleb Martin, Frank Roberts, one of those guys that are going to affect us. P.J. Washington was their number 12 overall pick. Cody Martin, 36. Jalen McDaniels, 52nd. Uh, the key losses here, Jeremy Lamb, he went and signed with the Pacers. Shelvin Mack, he went overseas. Kemba Walker to the Celtics. And Frank Kaminsky to the Suns. So uh, Vegas put this team at 23 and a half wins which is about 16 less wins than they had last season. Definitely seems like they're going to be a struggling unit. Um, Kemba Walker, probably uh, a <laughs> a reason behind any of the wins they got last season. So uh, minus 16 there uh, between him and Jeremy Lamb, I think is a appropriate deduction there. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to be targeting this team a whole lot early on. Maybe Rozier comes at us at a, a low enough price that I can – uh, buy into what he's selling. Uh, in the preseason, uh, Rozier had a 24% usage rate. Dwayne Bacon actually led uh, all players at 26% usage rate uh, while he's on the court, and Malik Monk was third at 22.4%. So uh, it was pretty evenly spread out, like 20, you know, 22, 23 across the board. It's not something crazy. We're looking for 30% and above. That's our sweet spot. So Terry Rozier did lead the team in. Uh, points per game in the preseason 15.2 points per game in 24.5 minutes per game Dwayne Bacon was second 13 to 25 and then PJ Washington like I said 12.2 uh, 12 points per game in 25 minutes per game has pretty much earned himself a spot in the early rotation so that's the Charlotte Hornets man if you guys are from Charlotte man uh, I feel for you it could be a tough season for you guys um, but it'll get better one day Michael Jordan knows what he's doing Chicago Bulls next up. Sadaransky, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, Denzel Valentine, Otto Porter, Laurie Markin, and Thad Young, Wendell Carter, Luke Cornett. Those are probably the names you remember from last season. Maybe some Ryan Archie Diacono, Shaq Harrison. Harrison, uh, by the way, dealing with a left hamstring. He's going to be available to play in the season opener. And Chandler Hutchinson, strained left hamstring, did not practice Sunday. He's without a timetable for return, so I doubt he plays anytime soon. Uh, we got a Vegas win total of 33.5 for the Bulls last year. They had 22 wins, so they're spotted 11 wins here. They're plus 11 versus last season. Uh, they did add Shaq Harrison. They added Tomas Sadaransky from a trade with the Wizards. They picked up Thaddeus Young. Uh, I believe he was with the Pacers last year. Uh, Luke Cornett, you remember him from uh, crazy days with the Knicks. Uh, they drafted Kobe White, number 7 overall. They did lose Antonio Blakeney by waving him. Walter Lemon, Robin Lopez went to the Bucks. Uh, Timothy Lawalu, unrestricted free agent. They did not uh, sign him again. And then Wayne Selden, also unrestricted free agent. So uh, Bulls, probably not a team that we expect to be really, really good in real life. But I do think we'll probably get a lot of guys from a fantasy perspective that we will uh, be curious with uh, day to day, depending on prices. Larry Markin was a guy that I, I liked uh, when he was cheap enough. Wendell Carter Jr. And then depending on the point guard situation here, Sadaransky versus Chris Dunn. Um, I think no matter what, Zach Levine's going to be the guy that we target. Um, but certainly, I think I might like Zach Levine a little bit more if Sato is the starter. 
uh, New Valentine. So I think Zach Levine's going to be our favorite bull to play night to night. And then maybe marketing kind of rises at the top. Zach Levine led the team in usage rate in the preseason, as expected, 30.5% usage rate. Uh, Kobe White, Milton Doyle, weird names here, 26 26%. Names you probably didn't expect to uh, <laughs> be high usage players. And then Otto Porter and Laurie Markkinen at 23.6%, 21.5% usage rate, respectively. Uh, points for game, as you might expect, Zach Levine led him. Otto Porter was third, 11.8 points per game in 19.4 minutes per game. Laurie Markkinen, 11.2 points per game in 22.7 uh, minutes per game. So we expect high minutes for all those guys. Even Levine, he averaged 23 points per game in 24 minutes per game. Probably going to be closer to 30, 34 minutes per game and maybe 30 points, 30 plus points per game. So uh, I'm curious to see how the, the, the Bulls get priced out uh, as the season opens. So let's move on to the Cleveland Cavaliers, man. This is another team that is going to be a whole lot of yuck for a little while. I will say early on there might be a little hope. Uh, with a healthy Kev Kevin Love, a healthy Larry Nance, a healthy Tristan Thompson. Um, but they have some young guards here. Drafted uh, Darius Garland, um, evolving Colin Staxton a little bit. And teams that you know have young guards tend to be a little bit more turnover prone, uh, a little bit more mistakes, just, just as growing pains. Um, that's their core. Garland, Colin Staxton, Jordan Clarkson, uh, Jetty Osmond, Kevin Love, maybe Dylan Windler, uh, Tristan Thompson, John Henson, somebody to watch. Um, but he is probably not going to play opening night. And then Larry Nance Jr. Uh, are all guys that uh, can get some buckets here. This team had 19 wins last season. Vegas put their total at 24 this season, giving them five more wins. Remember, Kevin Love was uh, out a lot last year, uh, limited in some of the games he did play. Um, and then in other games where he wasn't limited or, you know, even in 25 minutes, we saw him have huge explosions. So I'm very curious to see early on how they kind of perform in their schedule because uh, there's going to be some matchups that I do like playing them against. Definitely would savor the flavor for them against a team like the Atlanta Hawks. Um, Dylan Windler left tibial stress reaction, did not practice Monday. Blurry timetable for return uh, on September 27th. He was... Uh, projected to miss four to six weeks. Uh, the Cavs picked up Alfonso McKinney off of waivers on the 21st. Uh, John Henson dealing with a groin injury was a limited participant in Monday's practice. He seems unlikely to play opening night if he's out. Uh, Ante Zizic is also out. He's going to miss four weeks as reported on the 17th. So uh, they don't have a backup center officially. Of course, we know Kevin Love and Larry Nance could stretch out uh, if we needed to. Uh, but that would create... Uh, a unique opportunity. I don't want to say unique opportunity, but we saw some massive games from Tristan Thompson last season. Um, and a lot of the reason uh, for his big numbers were because he was playing big minutes. So we could get a big minute start uh, at a Thompson this season. Uh, looking at preseason numbers, Thompson led the team in points per game. Uh, 27.6 minutes per game, 14.5 points per game. He also averaged nine rebounds a game. So I definitely think Tristan Thompson, if he comes out at a cheap enough price, will be somebody I'm interested in early on. Colin Sexton, second on the team in points per game, 14 points per game. Remember, the, remember when I'm talking points per game in preseason, we're talking two, three, four, five games uh, for these guys. So let's not get too crazy, but just kind of an idea of how the squads have kind of shaken out. Uh, to start, Kevin Love, by the way, 26.5% usage rate um, in preseason. Uh, no surprise there. Colin Sexton, 26.7% usage rate. It's the Cavs. Uh, they lost David Nwaba. Cameron Payne, uh, who went to the Raptors. Nick Stauskas went overseas. J.R. Smith was waived. Uh, Marquise Chris uh, signed with the Warriors. Uh, Channing Fry retired. Those are the big ones there. Let's move on to the next team, Dallas Mavericks. I think this is going to be a really fun team to watch in real life. It's going to be a fun team to play in daily fantasy and, and season-long fantasy as well. Uh, I love the connection of Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis. Um, I loved what I saw in preseason. I'm very excited to see it play out. In the regular season, your core uh, players that you'll probably – uh, needs to get to know DeLon Wright, Jalen Brunson, J.J. Barea, Luka Doncic, Seth Curry, Tim Hardaway Jr., Justin Jackson, Christoph Przingis, Maxi Kleba, uh, Dwight Powell, and Boban 
Marjanovic, I love that pickup, man. How how like this is a fun team. This is a fun team. Uh, Dwight Powell, left hamstring, will not suit up for the regular season opener, which means already on night one, one of our favorite NBA DFS pastimes, Boban night, is upon us, man. I'm very inter- interested, intrigued to see what Boban's starting price is. You know when he's cheap enough, he's a lock. One of the highest, I think he has the highest per uh, in NBA history, like more than Michael Jordan did, so... Uh, hopefully we get him at a nice price. We'll have some fun. Mass picked up Seth Curry from free agency. Uh, free, uh, yeah, free agency. Um, DeLon Wright trade from the Grizzlies. Boban from free agency. Uh, lost Trey Burks. He went and signed with the Sixers. Uh, Solid Missouri signed with Real Madrid. Devin Harris, unrestricted free agent. And Dirk, retired, man. I like this team's win total. I kind of like the over. I think this might be... Uh, if this team was in the East, it's a lock for the playoffs. I think they may fight for like the eight seed in the West, but the West is so freaking stacked. Uh, but I'm very encouraged by what we saw in preseason from uh, the team's uh, highest usage rate in preseason. Luka Doncic, 34.2% usage rate. Uh, Christoph Sprzing is 31.5%. So we got two guys, the two star studs, um, averaging over 30% usage rate in their you know minimal minutes in preseason. Luka Doncic averaging 20.5 points per game uh, in that time where Przingis is averaging 16 points per game. Um, and, of course, those guys are filling up the stat sheet, uh, uh, both guys averaging over nine rebounds per game. So uh, I'm going to love playing these guys, and I hope we get them at uh, decent prices early on, but I'm sure the sites will uh, get there fast enough. Love this team. I think it's going to be so much fun. Uh, moving on to the Denver Nuggets with Coach Mike Malone. Nuggets are getting a lot of sharp action love. Um, I think it's for good reason. They were really, really good last year. And then uh, they didn't really lose a lot. Like, if you look at their offseason transactions, um, they lost Isaiah Thomas, who barely played last year anyway. Trey Lyles, you know, that's a notable loss, but they replaced him with Jeremy Grant. So, really... It's the same team, and they get to play Michael Porter Jr. It was a huge pick for them, and he basically was redshirted last year. Um, and now he gets to play. So, uh, arguably, they got better, and they were already great. Uh, last year's record, 54-28. and 28. This year, Vegas put their win-loss total at 52.5. And, and a lot of people are betting the uh, over Jamal Murray, Monte Morris, Gary Harris, Malik Beasley, Will Barton, Wancho Hernan Gomez, M. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., Paul Millsap, Jeremy Grant, Nikola Jokic, Mason Plumlee. Those are the core names that you want to really get familiar with early on. Uh, looking at preseason, um, P.J. Dozier led the team in usage rate. Uh, Will Barton, 23.5% usage rate. Malik Beasley, 23.5%. A lot of 20% usage rate, which is very um, reflective of what we saw from them last year. And then points per game, uh, Millsap. Led the team in points per game. Jeremy Grant, Malik Beasley, second, third. We know Nikola Jokic can be a triple-double threat. Um, I think that's kind of the story of this team. You're going to see a lot of spread-out usage rate um, and a lot of probably spread-out minutes. Um, so I do like, uh, early on, depending on what the prices is, I do like going a little bit lighter in a DFS standpoint for the Nuggets. Um, but Jokic will always be someone, especially at home, that... Uh, is somebody that I'm going to play uh, as a stat sheet st- uh, stuffer. Uh, and, of course, they picked up Jeremy Grant. Um, the Nuggets at home, man, I think that's their massive edge. They were a massive home uh, win-loss team last year, and they have been that way. That altitude uh, advantage that they have is uh, – I mean, every sport has it, right? Cores for baseball and, and uh, mile high for uh, football Broncos, but – in basketball, I think it is the biggest edge in uh, real sports just because it's the most cardiovascular intensive sport. Uh, and you can see teams just burn out of gas third quarter, fourth quarter. Uh, and these Nuggets players are used to training in that altitude, playing in that altitude. So it's a huge, huge, huge uh, tilt of the seesaw there. And, uh, yeah, I like, the, I like the Nuggets here. Nothing to see here moving on. Detroit Pistons. Uh, Reggie Jackson, Derrick Rose, Tim Frazier, Bruce Brown, Luke Kennard, Langston Galloway, 
Tony Snell, Blake Griffin, Markeith Morris, Andre Drummond, uh, Thon Maker. Those are the kind of names you want to get familiar with. They have a Vegas win uh, over under of 37 and a half. Their last rec- uh, record last year was 41, 41, even 500. Uh, notes Langston Galloway per Vince Ellis of the Detroit Free Press. Uh, Pistons have engaged teams on Langston Galloway's uh, trade for months, but his one year $7.3 million contract is not appealing. So they're trying to shop him around. We'll see if a team finds a need to overpay a one year guard. I don't think they will. Pistons picked up Luke Kennard's option for 2021. No one's surprised there. Blake Griffin was a limited participant in Monday's practice, and he's listed as day-to-day with hamstring injury. Uh, the Pistons open up their season with a back-to-back. It's very likely and probable that Blake Griffin misses one of those back-to-back games, and it might be opening night. So we might get a Andre Drummond heightened usage game on opening night. Uh, without Blake Griffin, and that was something that we targeted a lot last year. Reggie Jackson, for the last couple seasons, whether it be Dwayne Casey or Stan Van Gundy, has not been a guy that goes far over 30 minutes. And I think with the addition of Derrick Rose and Tim Frazier, uh, I don't, I can't really see him continue or, or break that trend um, as long as those guys are healthy. And Derrick Rose, it might be a matter of time. Tim Frazier, Derrick Rose, by the way, both picked up in free agency. Tony Snell picked up from a trade with the Bucks, uh, Markeith Morris was picked up in free agency. Christian Wood they got by claiming him off of waivers. Uh, they lost Wayne Ellington. He went to the Knicks. Joe Johnson was waived. Ish Smith signed with the Wizards. Isaiah Whitehead uh, went overseas. Glenn Robinson went to the Warriors. John Lohr was traded with the Bucks. Jose Calderon, unrestricted free agent. Uh, and Zaza Pachulia retired. Moving on to the Golden State Warriors, the reigning runner-ups for the uh, NBA League. By the way, I didn't, I didn't bother going through with the uh, usage and stuff for the Pistons preseason. You guys know how that team's going to shake out. It's going to be Drummond, Jackson, and Blake. Um, Warriors, Steph Curry, D'Angelo Russell, Jordan Poole, Glenn Robinson, Draymond Green, Amari Spellman, Ke- uh, Kevin Looney, Willie Colley-Stein, Marquise Chris. Those are the names that you want to get acclimated with for this team. Uh, last year, they had 57 wins. This year, their Vegas total projection is at 48.5. So they put them uh, uh, losing you know, 8-9 wins from last season, and this is a team that's going to be likely without Klay Thompson for the full season and, of course, without Kevin Durant uh, for the full season uh, because he's not with the team. <laughs> um, Klay Thompson said he will not be rushing his rehab process from his torn ACL suffered in the finals. He's been ruled out for the first half, but he likely sits out the whole season. Glenn Robinson will be the starting small forward. Kevin Looney, right hamstring, was able to scrimmage on Sunday. And Steve Kerr said he will, quote, probably start at center versus the Clippers on opening night. Uh, center Willie Colley-Stein, dealing with a foot, participated in a light workout after Friday's shoot-around. He's still likely to be out the first few weeks of the season. Marquise Chris will make a fi- make the final roster uh, after being a late pickup. Uh, they did pick up Alec Burks, some of the notable pickups. Of course, D. Russ from the Nets, Marquise Chris, Omari Spellman, Glenn Robinson, and Willie Colley-Stein from free agency. Uh, drafted Jordan Poole, 28th overall. Uh, and key losses, they lost Quinn Cook, Sean Livingston, uh, was waived, Shabazz Napier traded to the T-Wolves, Trevion Grant traded to the T-Wolves, Andre Iguodala traded to the Grizzlies, Julian Washburn was waived, Jordan Bell signed with the T-Wolves, Kevin Durant to the Nets, Jonas Drem- uh, Drebko went overseas, uh, McKinney waived, Andrew Bogut went to, uh, I think he went to Australia, DeMarcus Cousins went to the Lakers, um, and of course is injured now. Uh, so that's your Warriors team. This team becomes a little bit more interesting from a preseason standpoint, um, but it's still uh, it's still basically just uh, Steph Curry, right? Um, but no, uh, D'Angelo Russell was great in preseason. Uh, I don't I don't want to say D'Angelo Russell's a, a great clay replacement because I don't think he matches up on defense, but you definitely know D. Russ can get hot and be a really good scorer and really help stretch uh, the backcourt. Uh, in preseason, D'Angelo Russell averaged 18 points per game in 24.8 minutes per game, uh, and that's in four games played. Uh, Steph Curry went nuts all preseason. He averaged 26.8 points per game in 24.4 minutes per game. Uh, of course, Steph Curry led the team in uses 35%, but D-Rush right behind him at 30%. 
Uh, so that might be a backcourt to uh, target depending on price points. And uh, I mean, we saw a lot of 6K Clay Thompson on DraftKings last year, and I played him a lot. And that was, you know, fighting for usage with, you know, guys like KD and whatnot. I'm very, very um, interested in playing this backcourt as much as possible. Uh, and then Draymond Green without Kevin Durant might pick up a lot more responsibility and might feel a lot more pressure to do so. You know, before the KD days, Draymond was a uh, guy that stuffed the stat sheet. We saw him do a 5x5, five five, I think, against the Grizzlies. Uh, we've seen him have triple doubles, so I definitely think – uh, he'll be somebody that tries to do a little bit of everything in the preseason. Uh, Draymond Green, did he even? Yeah, Draymond Green averaged ten and a half. Uh, or no, excuse me, he averaged an eighteen point four percent usage rate, and he averaged uh, six point eight points per game, uh, four assists per game, seven rebounds per game, one point eight steals per game, and uh, half a block per game. And this is in twenty four minutes per game so uh, all those are really nice stats and you, you amplify that for maybe another 10 minutes uh, that's a, a that's a very very uh, happy stat line that I would gladly take a shot on in fantasy sports he has been a big supporter of the Marquise Chris pickup uh, basically dogging the teams that Marquise Chris has been on the leadership that they've been on uh, so I think uh, Marquise Chris is somebody to watch as I think Draymond is going to take Chris under his wing and kind of grow him a little bit. And uh, I think that could make Chris a dangerous player. Chris, of course, has been a good fantasy player, has been a very foul-prone player. We'll see if Green <laughs> can uh, help him fix that uh, as, a little bit. Jordan Poole, uh, another guard to watch here. Listed as a, a backup shooting guard here. Uh, he w was... Uh, Third in usage rate at 25.2% usage rate when he was on the court. Obviously, this is not coinciding with Curry or, or, or D-Russ much. Uh, and he averaged 13.2 points per game. So if he's going to be a second unit kind of guy uh, that can you know pick up 20-plus minutes per game, uh, he averaged 22.6 minutes per game in the preseason. And, uh, he's certainly somebody to maybe stuff in our back pocket as a uh, value play. He was their 28th overall pick, so... Uh, definitely looks like somebody they want to build on and uh, evolve, right? Houston Rockets, next team, man. This is one of those teams that made uh, a big shakeup in the offseason uh, with one of the biggest trades of the offseason, uh, acquiring Russell Westbrook. Uh, and that was a domino effect of Paul George going to Los Angeles. Your core players for the Rockets, Russell Westbrook, Austin Rivers, James Harden, Eric Gordon, uh, P.J. Tucker, Daniel House, Clint Capella. It's a very, uh, I, I don't want to say top-heavy team, but it doesn't have a lot of depth. Uh, Russell Westbrook dislocated his finger in the preseason, and Austin Rivers uh, dealing with a shoulder. They should be, both be good to go for the season opener. Uh, Nene Adductor has been ruled out for the Rockets' regular season opener. That's normal. Um the only notable pickups here, I mean, other than Russell Westbrook, obviously, they picked up Ben Mclemore off of free agency, Tyson Chandler, veteran center off of free agency, Thabo Cephalosha uh, off of free agency, uh, and they lost Chris Paul, traded to the Thunder, lost Iman Shumpert, unrestricted free agent, uh, Kenneth Fareed, uh, also a UFA. Um, man, I don't know what to say about this team. They're, they had a uh, projected win total of 53.5 from Vegas. Last year they were 53 and 29, so Vegas is kind of expecting them to be the same team, uh, and I don't know that you know Clint Capella to Russell Westbrook is is a lateral, um, but I will say that we're gonna have some questions early on about whether Harden and Westbrook can coincide from a basketball value standpoint. These guys are best friends in real life. Uh, they've been friends since they were 11. They played together in OKC. I'm not one of those naysayers uh, that's going to doubt their chemistry. I don't think that if they get into a losing streak that they're going to self-implode. That's not what I believe. Um, but there's certainly uh, some some logistical reasons to question how they coincide from a, from a now basketball standpoint. Obviously, when they were in OKC, Harden was off the bench, and neither one of them were you know pushing the average of triple-double and stuff like that. Um, also know that Russell Westbrook shooting percentage hasn't been the best, uh, but I do think you know he he now has a team that can space the floor a little bit, and he has 
uh, options to, sh to pass at all positions, not just Paul George or not just Kevin Durant. Uh, because for a long time, my man had to pass it to Andre Robertson and, and Alex Sabrina's, you know what I'm saying? So I do think that regard is going to be nice. We got a little taste of it in preseason. Um, James Harden led the team in usage in preseason, 37.1%. Russell Westbrook at 32%. Uh, points per game uh, average, Harden 31.2 points per game. Westbrook 16.2 points per game. Westbrook's peripheral stats in 25 minutes per game saw a little bit of a dive, but he did average two steals per game, four and a half assists per game, 3.2 rebounds per game on, of course, 25 minutes. So uh, probably expect a lot of minutes from Westbrook and Harden based on the lack of depth for this roster. We could see both guys pressing 35, 38 minutes a night. Depending on their prices, I don't mind you know taking shots on both of them. I do think this team is a little bit more... Uh, spread out because of Clint Capella. I think we'll see a lot of lobs to him, and Capella will benefit uh, de uh, depending on you know his early season minute allotments and depending on who is healthy behind him. I do think it feels like Tyson Chandler and Nene are going to be uh, potentially the old men rotation, uh, rotating uh, games. Uh, we saw Nene sit out a lot of back-to-backs and uh, I think we could see, you know, on back-to-backs, Tyson play one and they play the other, and they just kind of rotate from there, uh, just guessing on what they went uh, went through last season. Um, and that's it, man. I, you know, Vegas putting them at the, the, the same wins, essentially, this season. I, I guess, I think, you know, Westbrook a little bit more uh, concrete than Chris Paul in terms of injuries. Uh, Chris Paul always misses a, a large portion of the games with injuries. I think Westbrook could could spot him a few more, but with that said, the West as a whole probably got a little bit better. So it's not like they gain wins from the from many of the uh, Western teams that are are still out there. So I'm curious to see what what, what you guys think on the Rockets because I've seen extreme ends of the spectrum from guys who think this was a terrible play, a terrible move for the Rockets, and then guys that think this is a, a huge. You know, they're going to win the finals play. So what do you guys think about the Rockets? And basically, let me know what you guys think about some of these teams that, uh, or, or any of the teams that I've talked about uh, and if you're high on them versus the field and vice versa. Indiana Pacers, next uh, team I want to talk about, Coach Nate McMillan. Uh, just this team tends to, just tends to be there. Uh, last year, they were one of the quietest uh, teams to uh, just play be successful, be a good defense, have decent players. They were 48-34 last season. Uh, of course, uh, Victor Oladipo uh, was out uh, for the bulk of the season with uh, with a knee injury. He does not have a clear timetable to return this season, but it does appear that a late November return isn't, quote, totally out of the question. With him gone for the meantime, you want to get familiar with Malcolm Brogdon, Aaron Holiday, Jeremy Lamb, uh, TJ Warren, um, Demontis Sabonis, Miles Turner. Demontis Sabonis, by the way, agreed to a four-year, $79.4 million extension. Huge for him. They picked up Malcolm Brogdon out of a trade with the Bucks. Uh, Justin Holiday, free agency. Jeremy Lamb, free agency. TJ McConnell, free agency. Uh, th these are a lot of like scrappy players that uh, they've kind of picked up. And I also think they'll have uh, a pretty nice defense, uh, all things considered. Uh, and then, of course, T.J. Warren being picked up from the Suns is huge, too, man. This is, this is like, my favorite scrap, scrappy squad here. Like, no names, essentially. Just a bunch of guys that are really good individually at basketball. Um, Off-season losses. Uh, Tyreek Evans suspended. Corey Joseph went to the Kings. Wesley Matthews went to the Bucks. Bojan Bogdanovic signed with the Jazz. Dad Young signed with the Bulls. Kyle O'Quinn signed with the Sixers. Uh, and Darren Collison retired, and that was, you know, a, a move that really caused them to go out and get Malcolm Brogdon. So I like this team a lot. For I think they're fun. Uh, they have a forty-six and a half win total. Uh, I think if they can tread water, be a, maybe a, a little bit over five hundred as they get Oladipo back, maybe in December. Um, like this could be a really, really dark horse team in the Eastern Conference to maybe be a top three seed. Uh, just depending on how they do early on without Depot. I like them a lot. Uh, in the preseason, usage rate leaders, Aaron Holiday, 27% uh, usage. Uh, Doug McDermott, 24% usage. DeMontis Sabonis, 24%. Uh, 
uh, TJ Warren at 23%. Uh, points per game average, um, that backup center, Goga, uh, 14 points per game. TJ Warren, 13.8 points per game. Sabonis, 12.5 points per game. Sabonis averaged a double-double in preseason in 24 minutes. So uh, without that Young here, we get him all the way up to 30-plus minutes per game. He will be uh, one of my favorite plays um, early on. Uh, and then depending on you know minute projections and, and how um, the guard situation shakes out, of course I'm going to be interested in Jeremy Lamb, but this isn't quite the, the the no Batum or no Kemba situation. He does have to share uh, the court a little bit more with a lot of young, hungry players. Brogdon, Lamb, Warren, Sabonis, Turner. I mean, that is such a fun young starting lineup. I like that a lot. I'm good. I'm so excited for NBA this season, man. They're so these teams, man. These are just fun names put together, and I'm very, very curious to see how this team plays. I think that they're going to be really, really sneaky. Uh, let's move on to the Clippers here. Uh, Clippers, Doc Rivers again. Doc Austin, fifty-three and a half is their win total. Last year's record, forty-eight and thirty-four. I mean, Doc Rivers has overachieved season in and season out with a, a who's who of who's that for the last couple seasons, and now he gets two of the best players in the league to complement his already you know pretty scrappy, talented. Uh, a team that consisted of Lou Williams and Montrezl Harrell. So I love the Clippers. The Clippers, as long as they're healthy, are my pick to go all the way. I think they're the deepest, most talented team in the league. Um, and I think it's going to really come down to health. And certainly uh, you can make the case that they do have a couple guys that tend to deal with ailments every season. Um, but we can't play basketball like that, right? We can't project uh, injuries. Uh, players to get familiar with for fantasy: Patrick Beverly, Lou Will, Paul George, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Rodney McGruder, Jamichael Green, Mo. How could you be so heartless? Eva Kazubak, Montrez Harrell. Uh, Paul George is going to miss at least the first ten games of the season. He's quote hopeful to get back to the court by quote November ish. Kawhi Leonard will not have any restrictions to start the season. And Roddy Magruder is progressing from a high ankle sprain, but Doc Rivers is unsure if he'll be available for opening night. Uh, and, of course, uh, if he can't play, you're probably going to expect a lot of Mo Harkless uh, out there tonight uh, in in relief of him. Uh, Landry Schmidt, of course, another guy that maybe we, we keep an eye on here. Uh, and then my favorite combo here, if they come off the bench together, Lou Will and Montrezl Harrell, I love that combo. You might see Lou Will have to pick up some more slack here early on without Paul George, which is fine. We're very used to seeing him have to you know, play 34 minutes. I'm curious to see if he'll still come off the bench. That seems to be a trend for them, even when they need him uh, to play 35 minutes. He tends to come off the bench, maybe fighting for that sixth man of the year. Um, in the preseason, Kawhi Leonard led the team 35.4% usage rate. Lou Williams, 31%. Montrez Harrell, 27%. Those are the three names that I'm probably going to be looking at for the first uh, month of NBA from this team. If you could put uh, high minutes on Patrick Beverly, maybe every now and then he peripheral peripherals his way to value. If he's cheap enough on a site like FanDuel where you get extra credit for steals and blocks, uh, some of those defensive peripherals, uh, I wouldn't mind looking at him, but I think overall we're not going to be looking at him for, to pick up buckets, and it's going to be a lot of Lou Will, Paul George, or excuse me, Lou Will, Kawhi Leonard, um, so maybe some Jam Green, and definitely Montrezl Harrell. But overall, I like this team a lot. I'm very curious, curious to see how their pricing shakes out. And then Rodney Magruder, when he does come back, uh, was a pretty – uh, do it all player in the preseason this this year, and that's kind of what we've seen from him uh, in seasons prior, right? Uh, Patrick Beverly, by the way, in preseason, twenty one point seven percent usage rate, and he averaged yikes, it's all the way down. He averaged five point seven points per game, but he averaged one point three steals per game in fourteen point seven minutes per game. So. Again, if the minutes get closer to 30, maybe you look at him on Fandle, but I definitely think it looks like he might get phased out. Montrezl Harrell led the team in points per game, 16 in 22 and a half minutes per game. Uh, Lou Williams, 14 in 16.6 minutes per game. Uh, the, the Clippers really did not go deep in minutes per game in preseason, so 
don't want to overweight and oversell you guys on this points per game stuff because you might get scared <laughs> at how low the numbers are for the Clippers here. Uh, I'm just more really concerned about usage and Kawhi, Lou Will, and Montrezl Harrell uh, led the team in usage. So that's where we're at there. Lakers, Frank Vogel, LeBron James listed as a point guard now. Uh, and that's where you can play him on DraftKings. I don't know if uh, FanDuel caught up with that. Um, this is one of the teams with the most buzz this offseason. Uh, they have a Vegas win total of 50 and a half, which is a 13 win increase of their 37 and 45 record last season. Uh, there's a lot of great basketball to be watched in the Staples Center this season. If you guys. Uh, or if the vendors just inked the contract with the Staples Center before both teams buffed up this offseason, man, they, they really got themselves a great deal uh, because there's going to be a lot of must-watch basketball there, and uh, that place is going to be just jumping all all season long. Uh, players to get to know, LeBron James, John Rondo, Avery Bradley, KCP, Danny Green, Jared Dully, Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma, he's injured, JaVale McGee, and Dwight Howard. LeBron James and Anthony Davis will not have any minute restrictions in Tuesday's season opener versus the Clippers. Rajon Rondo dealing with calf soreness questionable for opening night. Kyle Kuzma left foot likely to miss the first couple of weeks of the Lakers season. And DeMarcus Cousin torn ACL expected to miss the full season. The Lakers have applied for a disabled player exception. If that's approved, then Cousins has to miss the entire season, um, which, of course, we expect them to do anyway. Uh... Lakers picked up Avery Bradley from free agency, Quinn Cook free agency, Troy Daniels, Demetrius Jackson, Danny Green, uh, Kostas Antetokounmpo claimed off of waivers, Jared Dudley free agency, uh, Boogie, and then of course Dwight Howard drafted Taylor Horton Tucker, 46th overall in a trade from the Magic, and they lost a lot. A lot of it was involved in that Anthony Davis trade, Lonzo Ball to the Pelicans. Isaac Bonga to the Wizards, Josh Hart to the Pelicans, Lance Stevenson went overseas. Uh, overseas, Reggie Bullock signed with the Knicks, Brandon Ingram to the Pelicans, uh, Jamario Jones traded to the Wizards, Jonathan Williams signed uh, with the team overseas, Mike Muscala signed with the Thunder, Tyson Chandler to the Rockets, and Mo Wagner traded to the Wizards. So this team had to do a lot of trading to make room uh, for AD, but they did it. Uh, 50 and a half wins here. I think, uh, you know, obviously, they got... Two of the best players on the planet Earth, LeBron James, AD. But it sure feels like this team is one injury away <laughs> from becoming the Cavs of you know a couple seasons ago or even last year's Lakers. Um, and I definitely don't want to put that juju on anyone. But, hey, Anthony Davis hasn't been the most sturdy player in the, in the National Basketball Association. So uh, 50 and a half seems like a risky bet just because of – that and then of course LeBron James in his aging years uh, probably gets put on a rest management type of plan. So we'll see how that goes. Kyle Kuzma though, uh, they're they're gonna want him back really really soon. Anthony Davis looked like an absolute monster in uh, in preseason. No surprise there. He averaged 13 points per game and 20.8 minutes per game. In those 20 minutes, he averaged six rebounds. 3.8 uh, assists, 1 steal, and 1.5 blocks per game. Uh, he also averaged 27% uh, usage rate. LeBron James, 28.6% usage rate. We're getting point LeBron. We're getting Anthony Davis. It's going to be sick. Those are two guys we want to go after. Um, and they're going to be very, very popular early on. Uh, getting the, getting the supplementary, supplementary plays to those guys might be a little bit more challenging. Uh, Dwight Howard's getting paid per game right now. That's how strapped the Lakers are for salary, by the way. Uh, and then, of course, Javal McGee coming off his best season yet. Uh, so there's a lot of question marks here. And then, of course, we have a lot of constants, and that's going to be LBJ and AD. That's the Lakers, man. That's the Lakers. Do you guys think the Lakers are better than the Clippers? Because I don't. But I'm curious to see what you guys think. You guys know more than me, right? Memphis Grizzlies with Coach Taylor Jenkins. Looking like, looking like one of those tank teams. 26 and a half is what Vegas has their win total at. Last year, they scrapped together 33 wins. Uh, their team core that you should probably get familiar with, Jay Morant, Tyus Jones, Dylan Brooks, Grayson Allen, DeAnthony Melton, uh, Andre Godala, Jay Crowder, uh, Josh Jackson. He actually won't start in the big leagues. Um, Jaron Jackson, Kyle Anderson, Jonas Valanciunas, Miles Plumley. Yeah, no, no. Who's that? <laughs> like, this is a... a 
a really, really, really yucky um, core of players here. It's uh, it's rough. D'Anthony Melton's going to miss a few weeks to start the season. Josh Jackson will start the season in the G League. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, sore foot, practiced in full on Monday and said he will play in the season opener. J Val is probably the guy I would look to uh, in DFS. Of course, we would have to, uh, as always, feel confident in the minutes that he might get. Uh, but he usually produces on a permanent basis. Uh, Jay Morant was their number two overall pick. Uh, we'll see how he uh, does when uh, the lights are on in regular season. Uh, but he's certainly somebody that they've been um, pushing in the preseason. In the preseason, Jay Morant had a 25.9% usage rate, which isn't that high for a point guard. Uh, and he uh, averaged 11.2 points per game in 21 21- Point nine minutes per game with 7.2 assists per game. So the assists were really, really good. So, I mean, over 7 assists per game in under 22 minutes. Uh, you stretch that out to 30 minutes, this guy's flirting with double-doubles every night. So we'll see how uh, how that goes uh, in terms of his pricing early on. Dylan Brooks led the team, or excuse me, Jaron Jackson Jr. led the team in points per game, uh, 14.4 points per game and 24.5 points per game. Uh, and then past Jay Morant, Really spread out usage. Dylan Brooks, 25.5%. Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, 25%. Um, so it's it's the Grizzlies, man. They're going to be kind of yucky. They were kind of a slow, grinded out um, team last year. Uh, if we look at pay stats for the league last season, uh, Memphis was the slowest paced team in basketball, averaging 98.8 uh, possessions per game. And that was right below Cleveland, right below Detroit. So. Uh, I kind of expect them to kind of continue that. I think that's uh, when you got this kind of core of players and you're a coach, if you're trying to game plan to win games, probably want the other team to have as few possessions as possible. Right? Uh, Lost uh, transaction or players lost over the offseason. Avery Bradley went to the Lakers. Javon Carter to the Suns. Mike Conley traded to the Jazz. Tyler Dorsey signed with the uh, so signed with overseas team. Justin Holiday went to the Pacers. DeLon Wright to the Mavs. C.J. Miles to the Wizards. Julian Washburn to the Warriors. Chandler Parsons to the Hawks. Uh, Ivan Rab uh, was waived. Dwight Howard waived. Miles Plumley waived. Joakim Noah, unrestricted free agent. Still, still not on a team, by the way. And Tyler Zeller, also a UFA. Miami Heat. Next up, Coach Eric Spolstra. Coming back for another season. Last season, 39-43. This season, they've got a Vegas total of 43 and a half. They've got a pretty different team than last year. But uh, picking up Jimmy Butler uh, is nice for them. But they have some drama going on, man. So I'll say this. The the guys you should get familiar with for for the Miami Heat, Goran Dragic, Justice Winslow, Tyler Harrow, <coughs> Harrell, uh, Jimmy Butler, Derek Jones Jr., Kelly Olynyk, James Johnson, Bam Adebayo, uh, Myers Leonard. So the main guys is maybe Drogic, Winslow, uh, Harrow, Butler, and Adebayo, especially Adebayo. Dion Waiters was suspended by the team for conduct detrimental to the team. He went on Instagram and implied that Eric Spolstra's championships were not earned due to the roster he had. Of course, LeBron, the big three. He laughed at the idea of Harrow being better than him. And he liked replies to his status about the team trading or waiving him. The bridge is on fire. So I don't think we've seen... I don't. I, Deion Wade is probably done with the Heat. Uh, they're probably going to try to trade him. We'll see. Um, so that's going to add, you know, number 13 overall pick, um, Tyler Harrow to uh, probably pick up a lot of the slack. I think he's 19, uh, but Jimmy Butler is a big believer in him. Of course, Jimmy Butler is someone they uh, picked up. They traded him uh, to, from the 76ers. Uh, I think Jay Rich was part of that. They also picked up Myers Leonard uh, because they traded Hassan Whiteside to the Blazers. Uh, Dwayne Wade also retired. And of course, like I said, Jay Rich gone. So uh, let's talk about the immediate changes that we can take advantage of. First of all, no uh, Hassan Whiteside. Bam Adebayo is probably going to be one of my favorite center targets early on uh, because we could probably sink our teeth in a decent allotment of minutes for him. 
uh, especially uh, going against teams where you know his skill set would uh, benefit them uh, most of all. Uh, and then uh, Jimmy Butler, man. Jimmy Butler only had a 21.6% usage rate in the preseason, but Dion Waiters led all players at 26.5%. So I definitely think we'll see Butler kind of pick up some of that slack. And then, of course, Justice Winslow, uh, he gets some more point guard duties. Uh, we'll, we'll try and pick up some of that. I don't think Harrell's going to be like asked to do everything early on. He obviously wants to grow into the player. He did lead the team in points per game uh, and minutes per game. Um, so I think they're going to give him every opportunity to grow and evolve, uh, but they're going to keep him under the wings here. Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, they get, he got some really good company to learn from. Jimmy Butler averaged 13.3 points per game in 26 minutes per game in the preseason, five assists, almost a steal per, and over a block per in five rebounds. So a little bit of a stat stuffer type of guy. You guys know the Miami Heat, uh, probably not going to push the pace much. Uh, Miami Heat had... The 22nd pay, uh, was 22nd in pace last season, 100.7 possessions per game, uh, and allowed 105.1 points per 100 possessions, which uh, was seventh best in the NBA. So uh, definitely doesn't feel like their defense got worse. I mean, Jay Rich to Butler, <laughs> I, you could argue it's a lateral, but it's probably an improvement, right? Um, and then maybe the guard situation gets a little murky. And that's it for the Heat, man. The Heat are the Heat. They're spotted a few more wins than last year. Uh, probably fight to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. And it's, again, it's another one of those dark horse teams in the East, man. Jimmy Butler, superstar of the league. Uh, can he take this team in, in this city to uh, some postseason glory? And I like Adebayo, like I said. Uh, by the way, Kelly Olenek, I don't want to just like gloss over him. Kelly Olenek, uh, in a per-game standpoint, was... Third in usage behind Kendrick Nunn, uh, Deion Waiters. Uh, Olenek had a 26% usage rate. And Nunn, by the way, absolutely uh, had a incredible game uh, in his last time. I think he dropped a 40 bomb. So um, look for him to kind of be earning some minutes uh, in this rotation and, and maybe being a uh, source of scoring off the bench for the Heat uh, as the season progresses. Uh, let's move on to the Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks have a 57.5 win projection. Last year, they won 60 games. Uh, team didn't really change a whole lot. Malcolm Brogdon being the biggest uh, change from last year to uh, this year. Uh, guys, you should probably get to know a little bit on the, the Bucks. Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, Wesley Matthews. Uh, Chris Middleton, Kyle Korver, Pat Connaughton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Ursan Ilyasova, Brooke Lopez, and his brother Robin Lopez on the squad together. Um, Eric Bledsoe has a fractured or has fractured cartilage in his ribs. He's questionable for opening night. Uh, he's been taking it easy, so you might see George Hill uh, be the opening night starter, uh, and then maybe uh, you see some point Giannis uh, back in the mix here and Ursan Ilyasova. Uh, starts at the four, and then you know maybe they get a little creative with Middleton at the four and uh, Corver and whatnot uh, playing the wing here, which is which is fine. <laughs> like I think that's how this team runs. They can just let Giannis have the ball. Uh, they picked up Kyle Corver from free agency. Frank Mason, Wesley Matthews, Cam Reynolds, uh, Thanasis Antetokounmpo, Dragon Bender, Robin Lopez. All of those pickups were through free agency. They lost Malcolm Brogdon in a trade to the Pacers. Tim Frazier went to the Pistons. John Lohr was waived. Tony Snell traded to the Pistons. Paul Gasol signed with the Blazers. And Nikola Mirotic uh, went to the EuroLeague. He got tired of the NBA. Giannis Antetokounmpo averaged 27.3 points per game in the preseason. Three games played 23.5 minutes per game. He's nuts. He averaged 12 rebounds per game in the uh, in those minutes as well. Had a 40.1% usage rate. He's the guy. We'll be playing him a lot. Uh, yeah, we'll be playing him a lot. There was a game where they were all out. Giannis and Middleton and all these cats were out. And Brooke Lopez went off. Uh, definitely keep that card in my back pocket if we get games this season where Giannis is out. We have seen that a lot where Giannis is out. Middleton goes off. But yeah, definitely keeping Brooke Lopez in my pocket as well. Let's move on to the Timberwolves. Uh, they have a win projection of 35 and a half last year. They won 36 games. Um, probably one of the more quiet season to season uh, teams in terms of um, 
who they picked up and who they lost from last year to this year. Uh, they do kind of get a new player in Robert Covington. Uh, he played for them last year, but then he got injured. Um, didn't, didn't get a whole lot of games in um, when he was in that Jimmy Butler trade. But I love Ro- Rocco, man. He's, I love him uh, as a high-minute guy with a lot of peripheral upside. Guys to get to know, Jeff Teague, Shabazz Napier, Josh Okaji, Andrew Wiggins, Robert Covington, Noah Vonley, Carl Anthony Towns, the big cat, Ernie Ladd, Jordan Bell, Gorgie Zhang. Jeff Teague said he did not play any basketball all summer and said he doesn't feel 100%, but he feels, quote, okay. So he's probably going to start at less than 100% for opening night. Center Jordan Bell, dealing with a calf injury, says he's not going, quote, full blast in practice yet, but he anticipates being an opener, uh, being available for the season opener biggest offseason moves here Shabazz Napier trade from the Warriors uh, Trevion Graham traded with the Warriors Jordan Bell free agency Jake Lehman traded with the Blazers Noah Vonley free agency um, drafted Jared Culver number 6 overall it's a pick that they got with a trade with the Suns uh, and then picked Jalen Nolan 43 overall lost Jared Bayless he went overseas Mitchell Creek he went overseas Tyus Jones to the Grizzlies Cam Reynolds waved Derek Rose to the Pistons Luol Deng signed with the Bulls and then retired Taj Gibson signed with the Knicks Dario Sarge traded to the Suns and Anthony Tolliver signed to the Blazers so not a whole lot of impact players switching from last year to this year. I will say Derek Rose kind of stepped up in some big spots, but it wasn't like a big stretch, right? It was a couple individual games. Um, maybe they're a little light in the guard category here. But uh, Carlton Towns is going to be the guy I'm targeting early on, and then I like it, uh, Robert Covington uh, to maybe be a high-minute guy um, that just fills the stat sheet. In the preseason, Andrew Wiggins led this squad in usage, 27.4%. Uh, usage rate, Carlton Towns, 26% usage rate. Uh, minutes, or excuse me, points per game. Uh, you guessed it, Cat, 17.2 points per game, 21.1 minutes per game. Uh, so he didn't even play high minutes per game. And we know that these T-Wolves are guys that play a lot of minutes the last couple of seasons. We've seen them. Uh, essentially lead the league in minutes per game for their starters, and Cat has been one of those guys. So he's already in uh, high point-per-minute form. Go ahead and give him to me for uh, season-long early on for sure. Let's move on to the Pelicans, another team that changed drastically from last year to this year. Um, probably one of the, the most interesting teams without a superstar. I mean, Zion Williamson is a superstar, right, but he's not – an established NBA player. He was the first overall pick, and he's going to be missing some time. Core players here, Lonzo Ball, Frank Jackson, Drew Holiday, J.J. Redick, Brandon Ingram, Etwan Moore, Zion Williamson, uh, Nicolo Melli, Derek Favors, Jalil Okafor. <laughs> they have a, a, a win projection of 39.5. Last year, their squad won 33. It's a whole different squad from last year to this year. They added Lonzo Ball from the trade with the Lakers. Josh Gray, free agency. Josh Hart, trade with the Lakers. J.J. Redick from free agency. Uh, Brandon Ingram from that trade with the Lakers. Uh, Nicolo Melli from free agency. Derek Favors, trade from Jazz. They drafted Zion Williamson, number one overall. Jackson Hayes, number eight, picked via trade with the Hawks. Um, and then they lost Darius Bertans. They waived him. Ian Clark went overseas. Alfred Payton went to the Knicks. Check Diallo signed with the Suns. Solomon Hill traded to the Hawks. Stanley Johnson signed with the Raptors. Christian Wood waived Anthony Davis to the Lakers. Julius Randle to the Knicks. Uh, and that's that's a lot of uh, that's a whole different team. It really is. No no Julius Randle. No AD. Um, no Alfred Payton. Um, and. Zion Williamson, man, he's dealing with that meniscus. He's going to be missing, I think we saw six to eight weeks. Uh, so this is a team that's going to look a whole lot like the Lakers and a very, very, very uh, light and fluffy small uh, front court here. So uh, Derek Favors was somewhat injury prone in the uh, Utah uh, Jazz team. We'll see if he can stay healthy enough to kind of lead this front court. But Jalil Okafor lurks behind him. Uh, he was the guy that... Um, has been a great point per minute player when given the opportunity. Uh, in preseason, he averaged 15.6 minutes per game, 10.2 points per game, and 4.8 rebounds per game. Um, the 
leader in points per game in preseason was Zion Williamson, and he also led them in minutes per game at 27.2. Uh, so maybe he just went a little too hard too soon. Uh, usage rate leaders, Brandon Ingram, 26.8%. Uh, Zion Williamson, 25.7%. Drew Holiday, 25.7%. Last season, the Pelicans games were games I targeted specifically because they played a lot of minutes, a lot of fast-paced basketball. Uh, and I would assume that early on without Zion, we can kind of attack the same thing because Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram uh, in their Laker days are also high-minute, uh, upper-paced basketball players. Uh, so I'll definitely be curious with them depending on how soft their pricing is early on. J.J. Redick. Uh, is likely to remain in the starting lineup for the season opener per coach Alvin Gentry pushing Brandon Ingram to the four. Uh, Derek Favors expected to be, quote, fine to play for opening night, who's dealing with soreness. So you might see Brandon Ingram uh, at the four, Favors starting at the five, Drew Holiday and J.J. Reddick starting on the wing, and then Lonzo Ball being their uh, point guard there. So that's uh, that's going to be an interesting Interesting starting five. I definitely think they're behind the eight ball against this uh, Toronto Raptors team on opening night, but we'll see how their schedule kind of pans out during the first couple weeks um, and how we can potentially take advantage of their prices and matchups. Let's move on here. New York Knicks, Coach Dave Fisdale. Don't we love Dave Fisdale? Uh, last year, the Knicks had 17 wins. This year, Vegas put them at a projection of 26.5 to bet the over-under. Names to be familiar with, Dennis Smith Jr., Alfred Payton, Frank Nielakina, R.J. Barrett, Wayne Ellington, Damian Dotson, Marcus Morris, Reggie Bullock, Kevin Knox, Julius Randle, Taj Gibson, Mitchell Robinson, Bobby Portis. Uh, the Knicks and their franchise were kind of banking on getting Zion Williams in with the number one overall pick, and that did not happen. Instead, they got R.J. Barrett with the number three pick. Um, look how potentially deep this rotation is. Dave Fisdale has been one of the more annoying coaches from a fantasy perspective uh, to run really, really deep minute rotations or randomly give a certain guy 30 plus minutes and he breaks the slate. Definitely looks like the potential for that to be a trend here uh, will continue. Fisdale said he's undecided as to who he will start at point guard in the season opener. Dennis Smith Jr., Alfred Payton, and Neil Aquina were all pretty inefficient in the preseason. The only guy that kind of gets a, a, I don't want to say a free pass, but Dennis Smith Jr. was dealing with a back injury. Other than that, they were not. They were building a brick house with uh, all their missed shots. The Knicks picked up the team option of Frank Nielakina worth $6.3 million for the 2020-2021 season. The Knicks have exercised third-year team option on Kevin Knox. And uh, power forward Taj Gibson dealing with a right calf did not practice Monday. He's questionable for opening night. Seems like as questionable as the guards and forward situation is for the Knicks, we might be able to lean on a guy like Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson um, for the front court here uh, as potential co constants. Um, but like I said, Dave Fisdale is Dave Fisdale, and he likes to uh, be a massive DFS headache. Uh, in the preseason, uh, Alonzo Trier led the team in usage 27.3%. Um, Taj Gibson, 25.5%. Julius Randle, 24%. Marcus Morris, 23%. We even saw Marcus Morris already get ejected from a game in preseason. And Marcus Morris led the team in points per game at 17.3 points per game in 25.7 minutes per game. Julius Randle also averaged 31.3 minutes per game in four preseason games. That's a good sign. R.J. Barrett uh, averaged 37 minutes per game in four preseason games. So they're trying to get the young gun minutes and stress out. Can we bank on that type of minute tree to continue? I hope so, uh, because I would be curious in playing these guys going forward, uh, but especially Julius Randle. Uh, but you got to remember Julius Randle's big games in the last couple of years with the Lakers and the uh, Pelicans came in very fast-paced teams and very high uh, usage and high minutes. And I don't know that we get that here uh, on this Knicks team. Um, like I said, his usage rate in the preseason in – uh, four games was 24%, which is not crazy, but not low either. So we'll be watching that because I love playing Julius Randle the last couple of years. Uh, the Knicks also added Wayne Ellington, Alfred Payton, Reggie Bullock, Tosh Gibson, Marcus Moore. Did I already go this? Bobby Portis, Julius Randle. Yeah, I think we already went on. They lost Emmanuel Moutier. He went to the Jazz. 
Um, Henry Allenson went to the Nets. Mario Hazonia with two to the Blazers. Isaiah Hicks went overseas. Lance Thomas waved. Noah Vonley went to the T-Wolves. Luke Cornett signed with the Bulls. DeAndre Jordan signed with the Nets. John Jenkins became an unrestricted free agent. Oklahoma City Thunder, next team on the docket. Last year, 49-33. and 33. Of course, they had Russell Westbrook and Paul George. Not so much this year. This year, their total is 32 and a half. Names to be familiar with, Chris Paul, Dennis Schroeder, uh, SGA, Terrence Ferguson, Andre Robertson, Abdul Nader, Danilo Gallinari, Mike Muscala, Stephen Adams, and Nerlens Noel. This is kind of yucky. Um, I think this team uh, reminds me of, I don't know if you guys watch baseball, but it kind of reminds me of the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners started out surprisingly well. Like, they were winning games, and people were like, whoa, this team's supposed to be tanking. Why are they winning? And then they started losing a lot. Uh, I could see Chris Paul, you know, start the season a little bit healthy with some of these guys, scrappy guys, too. I mean, this is basically the Clippers a couple of years ago. Uh, Chris Paul, SGA, Gallinari, Steven Adams. Like, these guys are scrappy enough to be annoying uh, and maybe steal a couple wins in games that we don't expect them to. Um, but then management has to decide, hey, what are we doing here? But the, the Thunder are just stockpiling picks right now. So this is a team that, even if you're a Thunder fan, if they have a bad season here next season, they have a lot of picks. So within five five years, it's probably going to be a really, really talented team full of guys that you maybe not even heard of yet. Uh, Andre Robertson, dealing with a knee, was able to get in contact work on Monday's practice. He's expected to be a game-time decision for opening night. Uh, overall, uh, offseason additions, uh, SGI, SGA from the trade with the Clippers, Chris Paul trade with the Rockets, Gallinari trade with the Clippers, Muscala free agency. Uh, they drafted Darius Basley, 23rd overall via a trade with the Grizzlies. Of course, they lost Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Jeremy Grant, uh, Markeith Morris, Patrick Patterson, Jawan Evans, and Raymond Felton. So those are a lot of key losses here. Uh, just 32 and a half wins. Probably not a team that makes the playoffs. Uh, I'm sure they would love to trade Chris Paul, but I don't know that many people are looking for that contract uh, for a potentially aging, injury-prone uh, point guard. But we'll see. I love Chris Paul. Uh, and, you know, last year, every time he was 8K or less, and I think even times he dipped under 7K, I was suckered into playing him. And I'm probably going to do it again <laughs> here early on just because uh, I know he has double-double potential with points and assists. And then past that, Gallinari is probably somebody we're targeting uh, let's move on to actually just just kind of recap uh, preseason here for the Thunder. Uh, SGA led the team in points per game, uh, 18.8 points per game and 26 and a half minutes per game. Stephen Adams was second, 16 points per game and 22.7 uh, minutes per game. Gallo third and 14 points per game and 21.6. Chris Paul only played two games, averaged 19 minutes per game in those games, six points per game uh, and four assists per game. So. Uh, not a good sample size, but not a good um, per minute uh, there either to, to make you excited. Uh, SGA led the team in usage 29.8%. So if we're going off of preseason, SGA is looking like a nice early season target for for daily fantasy. If we can really bank on his minutes here, uh, they might be trying to you know, shake him out a little bit. Of course, he does have a little bit of chemistry with Gallinari and Andre Roberson. Has never been a shooter. He's been a pure defensive juggernaut. Uh, so that's you know that's almost a whole position that doesn't exist when it comes to projecting buckets here. So SGA might be a really fun early season target. Let's move on to the Orlando Magic. Uh, I don't know that any team had a quieter off season than the Orlando Magic. It just th this team is like almost the same. Um, very few changes. Uh, the main change, <laughs> uh, they added Al Farouk Aminu out of free agency. They lost Timothy Moskov and <laughs> waived him. Uh, Jerry and Grant went to a uh, free agency. Jarrell Martin, free agency. Other than that, this is basically the, the exact same team. Uh, the only thing that might shake things up a little bit is Aaron Gordon could flirt with playing uh, the three, being a small forward here. Uh, and then we'll see guys like Jonathan Isaac and Al Farouk Aminu play the four. Other than that, this is the exact same team. 41.5 is their win projection here. Last year, 42 wins. <laughs> they didn't do nothing different. DJ Augustine, MCW, Markel Fultz, Evan Fournier, Terrence Ross, uh, Aaron Gordon, Isaac Aminu, Vucevic, Mo Bamba. Those are names to kind of get to know for the Magic. 
think the Magic will be a pretty good de- uh, defensive team. I think that was one of their strengths last season that a lot of people kind of slept on. The Orlando Magic had uh, the eighth best defensive efficiency on the season, 105.8 points per 100 possessions. Um, so they were a top 10 defense. Uh, and offensively, they averaged 106.5 points per 100 possessions. So not extremely efficient, but um, definitely think this is a team that gets a little bit streaky at times uh, in, in terms of individual players. We've certainly seen Terrence Ross have massive games off the bench. In the preseason, Terrence Ross led the team in usage rate and points per game. Uh, his usage rate was 30.5%. Uh, his points per game, 14.2 points per game in 18.6 minutes, and this is five games played. So absolutely crazy uh, averages there. Mo Bamba played six games, 17.6 minutes per game, averaged 11.2 uh, points per game. Um, Aaron Gordon was second in usage rate, 26.1%. Vooch at 26%. And then Markel Fultz, 25%. So uh, it's going to be a, probably a, a mostly spread out team, uh, but Terrence Ross uh, as a high usage guy off the bench will win some tournaments here and there as the season progresses. Philadelphia 76ers, next team on the docket. This is a team that a lot of people peg to win the Eastern Conference. I think this is the deepest, most talented team, uh, just on paper from a talent st- standpoint, in my opinion. So I can't disagree with that. They, this was a team that uh, almost got there last year. You guys saw the uh, uh, images of Kawhi Leonard hitting that bouncing uh, bucket <laughs> and uh, Joel Embiid kind of crying about it. This is a team that uh, seems, to, seems to be better. Like I don't think Josh Richardson, going from Jimmy Butler to Josh Richardson, based on what Jimmy Butler had to do for this team last year, is that big of a step back. I think you could argue it's a lateral. I really do. Names to be familiar with, Ben Simmons, uh, J- Jay Rich, uh, Zaire Smith, T- Tobias Harris, James Ennis, Al Horford, Mike Scott, Joel Embiid, Kyle O'Quinn. Um, ben Simmons dealing with lower back tightness. He did practice fully on Sunday. And Josh Richardson has experimented as a point guard in preseason. Coach Brett Brown really talked up Jay Rich and Ben uh, as possibly being one of the best backcourts in the league. Uh, the big offseason moves, they picked up Trey Burke from free agency, picked up Raul Neto, Jay Rich in that trade from the Heat, Blazers and Clippers, Al Horford from free agency, Kyle O'Quinn uh, from free agency. Lost TJ McConnell, he went to the Pacers, JJ Redick went to the Pelicans, Jimmy Butler to the Heat, uh, Jonathan Simmons traded to the Wizards, Boban Marjanovic signed with the Mavs, Greg Monroe signed with uh, overseas team and Amir Johnson, unrestricted free agent. Ben Simmons in the preseason. You ready for this? Attempted and made <laughs> a three point shot. And in this regular season, there's a lot of hype and speculation that uh, he might shoot some threes. He shot a thousand percent from three in preseason. That's an official stat. <laughs> Totally sustainable. Joel Embiid, of course, led the team in points per game. Uh, minutes per game, 20.4 minutes per game, 18.2 points per game. Led the team in uses, 32% usage rate. Uh, ben Simmons, 25% usage rate. Probably expect those guys to be your favorite DFS plays from a day-to-day standpoint. Ben Simmons, probably one of the uh, team leaders in minutes per game. And then I'm really curious with Jay Rich here. I was a Jay Rich uh, truther. You guys will probably remember my constant uh, uh, yearning to play Jay Rich uh, because he always played like 36 minutes, 38 minutes for the Heat and he usually offered a high floor and every now and then we would cash in on a uh, ceiling game. So, uh, I like that. But, I mean, just look at the talent on this team, man. Simmons, Jay Rich, Tobias Harris, Al Horford, Joel Embiid. Probably the best starting five in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Maybe their depth is is a little bit more questionable uh, than other teams, like the Clippers, obviously. But, man, I, I, I love these players individually, and I think this is your your Eastern Conference number one seed for sure. 54.5 is their win total. Um, yeah, anything special that I want to talk about? Oh, last season, what was the defensive efficiency for the 76ers? Philly last year was league average in defensive efficiency. 
looking at this squad, man, let's see if they uh, crank that top five, top seven um, for the league here because I think this is a really good defense. I really do. Phoenix Suns next up, Coach Monty Williams looking to surpass his win total last season of 19. Vegas put them at 29 and a half. The Suns were at the, I want to say center, but the Suns had a lot of trades this offseason. Some of them, most of them irrelevant. Uh, names to be familiar with, Ricky Rubio coming from the Utah Jazz, uh, Javon Carter, Devin Booker, Kelly Oubre, Mikhail Bridges, Dario Sarge, Frank Kaminsky, DeAndre Ayton, Aaron Baines. They have a log jam at guard, and then every other position is kind of light. Devin Booker's dealing with a sprained middle finger on his left non-shooting hand, but he said that he's, quote, fine. Uh, they added Javon Carter from a trade with the Grizzlies, Jared Harper, uh, Ricky Rubio from free agency, Czech Diallo from free agency, Dario Sarge traded from the T-Wolves, Frank Kaminsky from free agency, Aaron Baines from a trade with the Celtics, drafted Cam Johnson number 11 overall via a uh, trade with the T-Wolves, uh, Ty Jerome 24 overall via a trade with the Celtics. They lost Troy Daniels, he went to the Lakers, lost DeAnthony Melton, traded to the Grizzlies, Jimmer Fredette signed with the overseas team. Kyle Korver was waived. Dragon Bender signed with the Bucks. Josh Jackson uh, traded to the Grizzlies. And he's not even going to start for the Grizzlies. He's going to be on their G League team. George King uh, overseas. Uh, TJ Warren traded to the Pacers. He's been a big minute guy for the Suns over the last uh, three, four seasons. Rashawn Holmes signed to the Sacramento Kings. And Jamal Crawford, unrestricted free agent, still not on a team. He could help somebody. Why is he still not on a team? He could help somebody. Portland Trailblazers, next team I want to talk about. I, I I didn't, I don't know if you guys really want to know about the, no, we don't, we don't care about the Suns preseason, right? Devin Booker lead the team in usage rate. Kelly Oubre is going to be the other guy you want. And DeAndre Ayton. That's going to be the main three that we're going to target here. Maybe Ricky Rubio minutes his way into some good fantasy games if he's cheap enough. I'm going to move on from that. Then you get Portland Trailblazers. Uh... Next team on the docket here, uh, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Kent Bazemore was a curious pickup from uh, the Hawks. Kind of replaces the Evan Turner role here. Rodney Hood, Mario Hazonia, Zach Collins, Hassan Whiteside, Yusuf Nurkic, Paul Gasol. Hassan Whiteside could be the biggest fantasy story that no one's talking about right now for the first couple weeks. Easily, easy to be overshadowed by all the other uh, off-season transactions, news notes, pickups, trades, uh, signings, all that all that stuff. Hassan Whiteside could be the biggest fantasy um, hit that uh, people are kind of sleeping on. Whiteside, by the way, dealing with an ankle, was a full participant in Monday's practice. He should be fine for opening night. Paul Gasol, left foot rehab, will not play in season opener, could miss more time. And then Yusef Nurkic could be held out until after the All-Star break and slowly built up uh, to ramp up for a playoff push. Hassan Whiteside was a guy with the Miami Heat that uh, was coming off the bench or he played and got 20 minutes and Spolstra just like did not play him consistently. But when we saw him get minutes or even on a permanent basis, he was an absolute animal. If Paul Gasol is going to be out and Nurkic is obviously going to miss a lot of time, like this guy could be... Uh, unleashed, and I'm excited. I really am. Um, and I'll be playing him a lot early on until I get proven wrong. In preseason, Hassan Whiteside averaged 17.2 minutes per game in three games played. In 17 minutes, he averaged eight points per game, seven rebounds per game, assi one assist per game, almost a steal per game, and almost a block per game. We certainly know that Whiteside has high block potential, uh, and that'll be great for FanDuel. Uh, otherwise, on this team, the normal stuff you should expect. C.J. McCollum uh, led the team in points per game uh, in 25 minutes per game. Uh, Damian Lillard was second, 16 points per game in 24.6 uh, minutes per game. C.J. McCollum led the team in usage in preseason. Zach Collins was second at 25.5, uh, same as Damian Lillard. For the most part, this is the same team as last year uh, and how it's going to run. And like I said, Ken Bazemore is going to get the Evan Turner role. Um, but I'm really, really excited to play some Hassan Whiteside. Um, I, I think he could be a massive, massive play for tournaments early on. 
Uh, picked up Kent Bazemore from a trade with the Hawks. Mario Hazonia, free agency. Anthony Tolliver, free agency. Paul Gasol, free agency. Uh, of course, Whiteside from that trade. Nazir Little, 25th overall pick. Lost Seth Curry. He went to the Mavs. Evan Turner traded to the Hawks. Aminu signed with the Magic. Mo Harkless traded to the Clippers. Jay Clayman traded to the T-Wolves. Myers Leonard traded to the Heat. Anus Cantor went to the Celtics. Sacramento Kings and coach Luke Walton. Next team on the docket. By the way, Vegas put the Blazers at 46 and a half. Uh, Sacramento Kings are currently at a projected win total of 37 and a half. Last year they had 39 wins. Uh, definitely one of our favorite young teams to watch. Uh, often pushing the pace and creating a lot of points in the games that they do play. Uh, if you looked at last year's pace stats, Sacramento was tied for third in possessions per game at 105.5. That's tied with the Lakers and just behind the Pelicans and the Atlanta Hawks. So uh, I probably expect them to, to continue uh, that type of pace. Luke Walton, of course, uh, with the with the Lakers, ran a uh, pretty decent, uh, decently high pace, and I expect these young guns to kind of continue the trend of what they had last year. Names to be familiar with, the Aaron Fox, Corey Joseph, Yogi Ferrell, Buddy Hill, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Harrison Barnes, Trevor Ariza, Marvin Bagley, Nemanja Bialisa, Dwayne Dedman, Harry Giles, Rashawn Holmes. Uh, Buddy Hill agreed to a four-year, $86 million contract extension with the Kings. And then Harry Giles' left knee was limited to participate in Monday's practice. We'll see if he suits up or, or if it's a game-time decision for opening night. They added guard Corey Joseph from free agency Trevor Ariza from free agency Rashawn Holmes from free agency Dwayne Dedman from free agency drafted Justin James with the f- number 40 pick Kyle Guy number 55 pick via a trade from the Knicks uh, and they lost Alec Burks he signed with the Warriors Frank Mason was waived uh, Willie Colley Stein signed with the Warriors Costa Kufis went overseas to Moscow Corey Brewer is an unrestricted free agent as is Troy Williams in preseason De'Aaron Fox, 26.4% usage rate. Justin James, uh, their number, their top draft pick, led the team in usage at 32.3%. Uh, I expect that to be, you know, just kind of see what he has and flex him out, get him some reps here. Don't expect that to immediately transfer to the to the regular season, but who knows? We've seen weird things, right? Buddy Hill, 26.4% usage rate in the preseason. Points per game. Uh, average Buddy Hill led the team 19.2 points per game at 27 and a half minutes per game. Marvin Bagley second 18.2 minutes per or points per game in 27.7 minutes per game. Darren Fox 14 and a half points per game at 26.7 minutes per game. Fox, by the way, averaged six assists in those minutes and two steals per game in those minutes. So uh, I like this team a lot early on as a, a team to target to stack and game stack. Uh, and then Marvin Bagley. Uh, I think we saw him really shine last season, and then an injury kind of kept him limited down the stretch. Should be off the chains here, uh, and should be a lot of fun to target for DFS. So give me a lot of exposure to the Kings early on. Let's move on. San Antonio Spurs coach Greg Popovich uh, continuing his historic Hall of Fame coaching career with the uh, San Antonio Spurs. DeJounte Murray back healthy ready to go he agreed to a four-year 64 million dollar extension with the spurs he's a name to be familiar with Derek white marco bellinelli demar DeRozan, rudy gay lamarcus aldridge damari carroll trey lyles jacob podal all names to kind of get familiar with i think those are the core core names that the spurs will be um kind of riding on 45 and a half is their current win projection last season they won 48 games uh it's not that they got worse it's that the western conference got better so we'll see uh, if Popovich can uh, kind of find the right combination of this squad going forward. But I definitely think DeJounte Murray is another one of those under-the-radar um, kind of players that his true potential isn't getting talked about because of all the other storylines in the league. I think he's a huge pickup, or not a pickup, but a huge player to get back for this squad. Damari Carroll was added to the team in a trade with the Nets. Trey Lyles picked up in free agency. Uh, they lost Davis Bertans. He was traded to the Wizards. Donatus Motihunis went overseas to the Shanghai Sharks. Dante Cunningham, unrestricted free agent, as is Quincy Pondexter. In preseason, uh, talked about DeJounte Murray. Uh, DeJounte Murray, where are we at here? 
He had a 22% usage rate uh, in the preseason, and he averaged uh, 9.2 points per game in 18 and a half minutes per game, uh, with 3.6 assists per game, 3.8 rebounds per game, uh, and over a steal per game in those 18 minutes. So if he gets closer to 30 minutes, I think he will be one of those guys that sneakily stuffs the stat sheet a little bit. Uh, leading points per game, Bryn Forbes was your leading scorer, 14.8 points per game and 21.1 minutes per game. Then DeMar DeRozan, 13.3 and 23.4. And then Aldridge, 12.8 in 22.1 uh, minutes. Usage-wise, Bryn Forbes led the team in usage. Uh, right, well, He was right behind Qu- Quindary uh, Weatherspoon, but I don't think Weatherspoon's going to translate into the regular season, at least not anytime soon. And it's Popovich. It, it, Popovich is one of the guys you don't really over uh, over analyze and overreact to um, in preseason for sure. Like like it's it's great Popovich. He knows what players he has, what they're gonna do. DeRozan, Aldridge, Dejounte Murray, I think are your cornerstones here. And then I definitely think they have a nice deep bench that Popovich will make work quite well, and uh, he will rest them quite often on back-to-backs. Toronto Raptors defending NBA champions raising the banner tonight without uh, Kawhi Leonard. They uh, basically knighted Pascal Siakam as the Kawhi Leonard successor. He has signed a four-year max contract extension with the Raptors. Uh, Also uh, added Terrence Davis, Matt Thomas, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Stanley Johnson. Your core players to get familiar with Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, Norman Powell, OG and Nunaby, Pascal Siakam, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Marcus Saul, Sergi Baca. It's basically the same team. Sans Kawhi Leonard from last season. They also lost Jeremy Lin. He went uh, to the Beijing Ducks. Danny Green went to the Lakers. Kawhi Leonard, obviously, to the Clippers. Jody Meeks, unrestricted free agent. They drafted Dewan Hernandez, number 59 overall. Uh, and for the most part, I mean, this is the Raptors team. They're going to be likely a strong defense because of the Eastern Conference being a little bit lighter than the Western Conference. They're probably still going to fight to be a top four, top five seed, um, maybe even a top four. I don't know that I can uh, – if I got the Sixers up top. And, yeah, I think it's wide open after that. So, uh, still probably fight to be up there, and I think they uh, really kind of let Pascal Siakam fly because the man got paid. He's in his bag. Siakam led the team in points per game in preseason, 17 points per game, 23.6 minutes per game. Uh, Norman Powell's behind him, Serge Ibaka behind him, and then Fred Van Vliet, 25.9 minutes per game, 14 points per game. Usage-wise, uh, Siakam led the team in usage at almost 29%. Uh, Kyle Lowry at 24%. You basically know what you're going to get with Lowry. Uh, Van Vliet's going to probably float up there and maybe um, play a lot more uh, two-guard with uh, uh, Lowry out there. I'm curious to see what the official lineup is tonight. That's kind of what I'm expecting. Um, And then Marcus Saul, Serge Ibaka. Maybe, Maybe early on we could project one or the other to get enough minutes to attack uh, but for the most part, I think I'm just going to lean on C. Occam, uh as my core Raptors target. Uh, and then depending on matchups, we'll see where we go from there. Raptors, of course, were uh, a top defense last season, uh, especially with Kawhi Leonard being one of the best defenders in the game. Uh, Raptors were the fourth best defense, 104.3 points per 100 possessions. I don't think they free fall too far from that, even without Kawhi Leonard. Uh, because I still think all these players individually uh, are good defenders. Uh, let's move on from that. Utah Jazz uh, shaking things up a little bit. One of the more uh, under-the-radar teams in terms of how good they are. Uh, uh, the, we talked about how the Denver Nuggets, you know, all the Sharps are on the Nuggets to be really, really good. The Utah Jazz have a win total of 53.5 right now. That's 3.5 more wins than they won last season. That Vegas, <laughs> Vegas expects them to be better than last season, uh, and they could, with that win projection, fight for the number one seed in the Western Conference. And this is a team that no one wants to talk about because they're not sexy, but they're there. They are there. 
Uh, names to be familiar with. Mike Conley, Emmanuel Moutier, Donovan Mitchell, especially Joe Ingles, Bojan Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, Jeff Green, uh, Rudy Gobert, Ed Davis. Those are the forefront names that you're probably going to see early on. Joe Ingles signed a one-year, $14 million extension. He's with the team through the 2021-2022 season. He will be off the bench this season to start out. Uh, the team added Mike Conley in a trade with the Grizzlies. Uh, they picked up Emmanuel Moutier from free agency, Bojan Bogdanovich from free agency, Jeff Green from free agency, and Ed Davis from free agency. They lost Raul Neto. He went to the Sixers. Ricky Rubio signed with the Suns. Kyle Korver traded to the Grizzlies. Derek Favors traded to the Pelicans. Uh, Ekpe Udo went to Beijing. Tyler Kavanaugh. Uh, also went overseas. Double Cephalosha to the Rockets. Drafted Jarrell Brantley, 50 overall via trade with the Pacers. Um, yeah. Here's a team that's projected to be better than they were last year. And last year, they're pretty doggone good. Uh, in the preseason, your usage leaders uh, from the core players, Donovan Mitchell, 26.5% usage rate. He's probably going to be one of your highest minute per game players this season, uh, especially for this team. And then Mike Conley, is a curious addition. Mike Conley, when healthy, is one of the best point guards in basketball, but that's the asterisk there, when healthy. Uh, so if we get a full healthy season out of Mike Conley, I'd definitely buy into this uh, uh, projection to be a high-win team. But if this team goes down, or if Mike Conley goes down with injury, and it seems like every year you can kind of bank on him missing some games... Uh, where do they stand there? I think Donovan Mitchell has shown in the last two seasons that he can step up uh, and be a point guard and play a lot of minutes and, and take over. But uh, I do think you know losing your point guard would cost you some wins there. I don't know that Emmanuel Moody is somebody I trust to kind of uh, step in there. So we'll see. We'll see. 53 is kind of a, a high expectation here. Um, Rudy Gobert, going to be one of my favorite uh, targets at center as long as we get him at reasonable prices. In the preseason, he averaged 15 points per game and 25 minutes per game. In those 25 minutes per game, he averaged 8 rebounds and 1.7 blocks per game. Rudy Gobert is a FanDuel dream. Uh, if you get Gobert up to 32-plus minutes, uh, he's going to be a guy that constantly gives you a floor of a double-double, and his defensive peripherals, blocks, and steals are really, really, really savory for a site like FanDuel that really waits that at a high level. Uh, one more team to talk about, the Washington Wizards. Coach Scott Brooks, uh, this team's projected to be one of the worst teams in all of NBA. If we look at the total wins here, uh, the Wizards are, what, fifth worst? with uh, the, the, or Excuse me, the, uh, we look at this total. The Wizards are, yeah, fifth worst. The, uh, behind the Grizzlies, the Knicks, the Cavs, and the Hornets. So here's what we're working with in the guard situation. Ish Smith, Isaiah Thomas, Bradley Bill, Justin Robinson, Troy Brown Jr., Isaac Banga, uh, Thomas Bryant, Jan Mahimi, uh, Ru Hachimura are your core players to get to know. Isaiah Thomas dealing with a thumb. He's unlikely to play in Wednesday's season opener versus the Mavs. Bradley Bill agreed to a two-year, $72 million extension with the Wizards. He has a player option on year two. That's 2022 season. If he decides to decline that player option, he will have 10 years of experience and be eligible to sign the richest contract in NBA history, which would be five years, $226 million. It's a lot of money. His extension includes a 15% trade kicker, but he cannot be traded this season. He will also be ineligible for a Supermax the next two seasons, even if he earns all NBA honors. That's a lot to take in, but basically Bradley Bill got paid and he can't be traded this season. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Bradley Bill was a extremely high minutes per game guy last year, and in those minutes per game was a high usage guy, high scorer, uh, and became one of the higher price guys as the season progressed. Um, this is an ugly team, man. It's a lot to... A lot to be scared about if you're a Wizards fan. If you if you want to win now, I mean that John Wall contract's going to be hurting you with him injured. Um, picking up Ish Smith and Isaiah Thomas, not that uh, I, I, they're both undersized players, but they're veterans, right? They're they they're familiar with the league. They'll probably be uh, decent additions, but don't really expect them to be like 
plus over uh, average replacement. This team basically comes down to Bradley Beal, um, their nine, number nine pick, Hachimura, Admiral Schofield, maybe Thomas Bryant. It's a really rough around the edges team to like, man. It really is. Um, so I'm I'm worried about how many games this team stays in, uh, in uh, basically, uh, and how many times I get screwed playing Bradley Beal uh, when they get blown out. Uh, by 20 in the third quarter. So <laughs> that's something I'll be watching for. Uh, they lost Tomas Sadoransky. He got traded to the Bulls. Trevor Reza went to the Kings. Sam Decker went overseas. Jeff Green went to the Jazz. Jabari Parker went to the Hawks. Bobby Portis went to the Knicks. Uh, Jonathan Simmons was waived. Dwight Howard traded to the Grizzlies. He was also uh, ended up with the Lakers. And then Jason Randall, unrestricted free agent. For looking at preseason, no surprise, Bradley Bill led the team in usage, 33.7% usage rate. He also led the team, or he was second on the team in points per game, 14.8 points per game in 19 minutes per game. That's a lot of points in not as many minutes. Um, three assists per game in those minutes and 2.8 rebounds per game. Mo Wagner led the team in points per game in 21.1 minutes per game. He had 15.8 points per game. Um, didn't have a whole lot of rebounds to boot. Probably expect this team to continue to be struggling as a rebounding team. That was kind of their Achilles heel last season. Um, and if they continue to lose the rebound battle at a large seesaw deficit, uh, then I can't really expect them to stay in a lot of big games here. So this is a yikes, man. Bradley Bill, we'll see what he's priced at on the first slate that he's on. Um, certainly a guy that I like to be the highest usage guy and if the game scripts are neutral he'll play a lot of minutes but if they're not could get a little ugly uh, and if Isaiah Thomas is out against the Mavs Ish Smith probably eats up a lot of those minutes but of course Bradley Bill is the, the main guy there man the Mavs against the, the the Wizards here man Mavs should be able to clean up and, and be really good for fantasy it's just oh do they blow them out that's a yikes anyway that's your look at the NBA Hopefully this primer was helpful to kind of get you caught up on how every team is doing. I tried not to ramble too long, but heck, here we are almost two hours later, dude. That's crazy. So many, so much to talk about. So sorry we went so long. Sorry we went so deep. But um, I think I think this was valuable. If nothing else, it, it helped me get caught up. Hey, if you guys got anything else for me, twitter.com slash Sports. Like I said, our live streams will be on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Gundacker99, get yourself an account on Twitch. Get that app downloaded on Twitch. Make sure you follow the channel. We will have our first afternoon stream on Wednesday. And then look for more NBA content right here on this YouTube channel. We'll have night before videos um, previewing the day of slates and uh, light previewing picks for the upcoming NBA slate. RunDFS.com, man. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Uh, get yourself into the VIP, man. We'd love to have you. Uh, we'll have daily pre-lock voice chats and uh, that's uh, that's going to be a part of my daily process and it's a very very fun time and a very great uh, opportunity to connect and network with like-minded DFS players I love each and every one of you please help me out man if you went through this two hours hit that thumbs up my voice is almost gone I will see you guys in the next video good luck God bless go in some money